Hello everyone, welcome to this amazing video about Lava 4 8s. So, um, the, uh, I have my little clam friend here to help me with this video. Who is a Lava 4 8? So, they are divided into three phylums, which consist of Actoprocta, Brachiopoda, and Foronida, which I'm going to be talking about today. So the first one is Actoprocta, which you can see over on the chart right over here. So let me pull up a picture. So, Actoprocta, also known as bryozoans, um, they are abundant in small animal. <laughs> they are abundant in small animals um, in shallow water. They form colonies, which consist of thousands of individuals. They're zooids, and um, uh, that's the name of the individuals. So, to eat, they extend their lophophores, and um, they are hermaphrodites, which means they only use one sex organ at a time. And um, yeah. That's pretty much that is uh, the bryozoan summarized. Um, so a little bit more about them. They are the most abundant marine epiphytic animals. Epiphytic mean um, growing on uh, plants. So uh, they uh, they live in shallow water, as I said before. They but specifically they live on solid surfaces such as rocks, algae, shells, and ship bottoms. Um, <laughs> awesome, amazing alliteration. Am I right? <laughs> the bag. Anyway, so they form colonies of tiny individuals. Uh, each individual is called zooid, as I said before, and uh, they are the white anchor. Uh, Incrustations on objects like ship bottoms. As I mentioned before, it does not look pretty. Um, and they definitely mess up the ships a lot. Next up, Fornids. So, Fornids are small and worm like. Uh, they're found on rocks, shells, uh, pilings, and they're buried in the bottom of sediments. And they feed on plankton or debris caught in mucus or tentacles. So, they are able to secrete a mucus and they have these cool tentacles up here. They're very small, but you can still see them. Um, yeah, they're really cool. So uh, uh, they are uh, pretty large, loft. they have large lophophores, as you can see. Um, they feed on the algae that gets stuck in those lophophores. So they, they, they eat the algae and they can reproduce sexually and asexually. So that's, again, pretty cool. So, next. So these are brachiopods. Brachiopods? Don't know. Um, they, uh, you might be aware of, of bivalves. Um, so, I said before, uh, clams are lophophores. They're not. I actually just looked it up because I made a mistake there. Silly me, but it's a great um, way to learn that, uh, like, what the difference is between bivalves and brachiopods because this shows this shows the difference um, between them so uh, brachiopods uh, they are not the same on either side meanwhile clams are identical they have uh, the bilateral symmetry and brachiopods do not well at the very light at the very least in the same way they have the vertical plane of symmetry rather than the horizontal plane of symmetry that you could see in bivalves. Um, so that was a mistake that I made, but I'm glad I'm able to rectify it. So I'll rectify it. Huh. Anyway, so they uh, they are also different because uh, mollusks, which are in bivalves, they don't have lophophores. And if you don't know what a lophophore is, I'm not sure if I clarified it before. It's a circular or horseshoe-shaped organ, um, usually around the mouth. That is. Uh, that like has tentacles and like helps you get food. So if I can clear that up, um, mollusks do not have that. So that's the difference. And yeah, they're pretty cool. So they, this is like all the different views of the brachiopods. You can see exactly what they're talking about. So brachiopods are also known as lamp shells. They live in benthic and shallow environments. Uh, they have two valves of different sizes, so that's where the different the difference lies. Brachiopods also contain or have pedicles, and the function of these is to, is to um, 
attached to the seafloor and um, it keeps the animal anchored to the seabed, the clear sediment, um, which would obstruct its opening. And yes, that's the function of the pedicles on the breaking pods. The heck? <laughs> Sorry, my video wasn't pausing the recording. A quick overview of all three. Um, they are all sessile, contain a lot before, uh, set of ciliated tentacles that help with feeding and gas exchange. So that is just a little quick overview. Okay, so just to define a few things. So um, I've changed environments. I don't know if you can hear my fish tank going, but um, so lophophorites, um, the definition, they are sessile animals belonging to several phyla that share the common feature of feeding of a feeding device known as a lophophore. So then, as I said before, a lophophore is an arrangement of ciliated tentacles that function in feeding and gas exchange in lophophores. Just remember to know, or just important to remember. So then, foranids are worm-like animals. Uh, bryozoans are uh, small animals from Ectoprocta. Zoids are individuals in bryozoan colony, and a brachiopod is an animal belonging to phylum Brachiopoda that resembles a bivalve mollusk but is different. In, um, uh, in its symmetry, as you can see on the screen still, uh, along with having uh, the lophophore. So for, um, ooh, hold on, just thought it'd be nice, a cool picture. So, um, so some of the, the, um, I'm just gonna go over <laughs> something about this. I don't know what the heck I'm saying. Anyway, so, the phylum foranida. Uh, the common names of the organisms are foranids, the form and function of which um, it, it has bilateral symmetry. Uh, they're warm like animals that secrete a leathery tube around their body. And um, they reproduce asexually by budding or transverse fission. They can reproduce sexually. Half are hermaphrodites, in the other half, sexes are separate. They have a planktonic larval stage known as actinotropha larva. Their type of feeding, they use a lophophore to feed on plankton and uh, detritus. You could see a common, a commonality between these three uh, phy phylums are that they all use lophophores to feed. Probably why they're classed as lophophorates. Um, next is bryozoans. Uh, they're also known actually as moss animals. I didn't mention that before. They form colonies of small individuals called zooids that appear as white incrustations on solid surfaces. So you ever see the bottom of the boat is, the bottom of a boat is white, covered in a white substance that could possibly be the bryozoans. Um, most are hermaphrodites, uh, and they're, uh, Siphonouts larval stage is planktonic as well. Um, a larval, a planktonic larval stage is typically um, a, like a period of hours, weeks, um, or, or even months uh, in the plankton. The larva settles at a surface and metamorphosizes to their more adult sign. Uh, corals also do this. Certain corals. But anyway, so uh, that's what their reproduction is like. And they use um, they use their lophophore to filter food from the water column. So um, uh, the other one is Brachiopoda. Uh, they're known as the lamp shells. They have the body covered by a shell, two um, asymmetrical valves. Uh, valves are the shells. Um, many species have a stalk or pedicle that anchors the animal to solid surface. So remember that's the difference between the brachiopods and mollusks. The sexes are separate, and the planktonic larval stage represents <laughs> or resembles a tiny, a tiny brachiopod. So just a small version. And uh, for the feeding, they use a lophophore to feed on the detrit detrit detritus and algae. And um, the, the ecological roles of all of these, um, so the brachiopods channel nutrients from plankton to higher order consumers, so like the food pyramid. And then the bryozoa channel nutrients from plankton to higher order consumers, same thing. It's the same thing as well for foranida. So that's what all of them do. 
and thank you for watching. I hope this helped a little bit, and have a lovely day.